Uh, now, Europe's new multi-billion dollar Sentinel satellite program has returned its first earthquake image. Uh, I want to show you that in a second. It's hoped that mapping the before and after impact of a quake from space will lead to greater understanding of earthquakes and potentially save many lives in the future. With me to discuss this development is the BBC science correspondent Jonathan Amos. Jonathan, great to have you here. Uh, I want to talk about this incredible image, actually, behind us. What are we looking at there? It's a pretty picture, isn't it, Rajesh? This is the, uh, the Napa Valley uh, region of uh, the northern end of San Francisco Bay and uh, it looks kind of like, uh, I don't know, the bubbles in a washing up liquid bowl, doesn't it? You get this pretty uh, rainbow kind of refraction effect. of light effect yeah, yeah, yeah. What it's actually showing us is the amount that the ground moved during the quake just over a week ago. And the way that they do it is they take a radar image of the Earth before the quake and then they take one immediately afterwards if they can get the satellite overhead. The earliest they could do it was this weekend, and then they compare the difference. So the, 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 the kind of pink areas are kind of where the Earth moved the most? So what they do is they, they show you contours, contours of movement, and they, uh, they delineate each contour by about uh, 2.8 uh, centimetres, and if you count the contours here, you'll add up a total of about 10 centimetres. So that's how much uh, the ground moved around the quake just over a week ago, and it's this type of analysis now which the Sentinel program is going to automate in the years ahead. Previously this sort of analysis has taken weeks, months to do. Uh, the new satellite system that the EU has put up is going to pop these out within a few days of every earthquake and it's going to transform this area of study. So much more data available to scientists much more quickly. Um, what's it going to help them do? If you walk the fault, um, as many scientists have been doing in the last few days, you can see where the fault is exactly mm. on the ground because it buckles the roads, it snaps the uh, the curbstones, and we California the the skateboarders have been out, haven't they? Jumping over the ramps in the middle of the road. Now California, to some extent, is a bad example of this technique because it's such an intensively studied part of the world for earthquakes. But you go to other places in the world where they don't have that kind of infrastructure, then this is really the only way that you can get insights into where the rupture has taken place because it doesn't always come to the surface and if you go back to 2003 the BAM earthquake in Iran 25,000 people killed when they did this analysis they found that the uh, the quake occurred on a fault that nobody knew Very briefly, existed. Is it going to help scientists reach the holy grail of earthquake science which is prediction? <laughs> the topic that no scientist likes to discuss <laughs> you look you look for signals before an earthquake and say is there a connection to the event that came afterwards this type of analysis will go into that. Whether we'll ever be able to do that, I don't know. The scientists don't know. But unless you have information like this, you certainly won't get there. Okay, Jonathan Amos, great stuff. Thanks very much.